someone said, set your goals just a little beyond your reach. Now, sometimes I've done that and failed. As soon as Dr. Michael Moore of the Division of Music asked us to highlight John Adair, a generous alum who was donating an expensive piano to the university, I knew this was going to be a special story. He was thanking me on the phone. I tried to thank him for giving us this piano. And he's like, Michael, thank, thank you. you. I mean, the, the blessing is mine. So the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And yeah. he is definitely... Uh, exemplifying that for sure. We're here at Adair Pianos and uh, go in and meet John and find out more about uh, his gift and what his, uh, what his story is. Upon meeting John and talking with him, it became apparent that his love for his wife and his gratefulness for BJU were his two favorite subjects. Her name is Ellen, okay. Ellen Rampey, and she's from Anderson, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Right. And I showed up from Memphis, Tennessee and uh, <clears throat> we just had a glorious time at Bob Jones. It was so exciting. And uh, I went the whole four years without wanting to marry. <laughs> I then sat down with John to find out how the Lord brought them to the place where they can afford to give a piano like this to BJU. The beginning of his story was a bit surprising. My wife and I, we were in our 20s and we got a babysitter. So we went to a pizza parlor in Scottsdale, Arizona, where we were living. And there was a rinky-tink piano in that pizza, pizza parlor. And she went over and played it. And the customers really enjoyed hearing her. And she said, well, I'd like to have a piano like that. And so I said, well, I'll get you a piano like that. So I looked in the one ads and I found an old upright piano for $35 and I bought it. Yeah. Now my wife would play this and make it sound like a banjo <laughs> or a music box, <clears throat> or you can, you can, uh... Uh, then you can make it like that. Nice. But <clears throat> you can make it sound like a harp, see? And she would make all types of things. And I carried this piano all over Arizona with my youth choir we called the Scotch Little Singers. Yes, and my wife had, had so much an influence that she was a quiet person, extremely gifted, a fine pianist, wonderful pianist, a harpist, an artist. She did oil paintings. She was good with plants. She was good in calligraphy, stuff like that. Not only did we get a tour of John's workshop and a chance to look into the ways that he prepares pianos, but Dr. Deanna Moore got a chance to play the Busendorfer before it was even delivered to BJU. And I managed to capture her response almost immediately after we left. What was it like to play that piano? It's a wonderful instrument. The dynamics speak well on the quiet end to the loud end, and then it's just a beautiful tone. Everyone is going to enjoy it in the hall. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I, I I could tell when I was like, is it okay if she plays it? You were like, you know, you, were, you would come prepared. You Absolutely. had your music, you were ready. <laughs> yes, would not miss the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> From a broken $35 piano that they found in the classified ads, to donating a $200,000 instrument to be used in War Memorial Chapel, John and Ellen's story is one of faith, love, and sacrifice. It's important how we think, and how you think determines who you are. When I started Adair Piano, I did not want to be the catfish on the bottom of the river, but I want to be the best, the best that I can be for the glory of God. And you could see it in the marketplace, and that's why back in 2011, the Yamaha Corporation had known of Adair Piano and my work and they wanted what they call a wood and wire dealer to represent their most premier piano, the, the Busendorfer, and I became a dealer uh, for the Busendorfer piano for the state of South Carolina. Now that's a long way from my driveway working on pianos in Scottsdale, Arizona in 1965 to where I was then. Someone said, set your goals just a little beyond your reach. 
Now sometimes I've done that and failed. But after you fail, you haven't completely failed because you've learned some things. And that's very important.